Welcome to Donington Park. This is my fifth track day in the novice group and I feel I'm starting to make some real progression. So over the next few videos I'm going to share with you my journey and some areas I've been working on to improve my track riding skills. I'm also going to do a hot lap and walk you through the track turn by turn. Caveat, I'm not an advanced rider so take my guide as a guide only. Now once I've done my sighting lap and I understand the flow of the track, I like to take my first session to settle in and understand where I'm going to break, the best place to get my body position set up early for corners, and I like to take some time thinking about my lines and when to apply throttle on corner exit. One of the main areas that has drastically helped me improve my lap times is to break harder and later. Almost every time I ride a new track, and this is my first time at Donington, I find myself braking too early and too gently and having to use maintenance throttle before the apex, which really reduces my corner speed and unsettles the bike mid-corner. This feels awful. I found that I can almost always brake later and carry more speed than I first expect. The second thing I found, especially when watching my footage back, is that I can get back on the throttle much sooner than I am currently. I'm going to be heading to Donington again next week, and these are going to be my main goals for improvement. Nail my braking markers, get back on the gas much sooner, and hopefully carry much more corner speed. The final thing I'm going to be working on is my body position. Now everyone wants that knee down shot from the track photographer, and this is something that's been eluding me since I started riding on track. I can see from my mate's video that my lean angles are fine, I just need to get off and to the inside of the bike more, as I'm adopting too much of a road riding body position. Maybe I'll be sharing with you some knee down pictures in my next video, or perhaps my bike having a little trip to the gravel trap. A bit like this little moment I had, where I came in way too hot, turned in too early, target fixated on the gravel, managed to just about keep it upright by giving it a bit of throttle to stop this wobble I'm having. And then with slightly browner trousers than I left with, managed to regain composure and get back on the track. So we're here at Donington Park and I've had a really good few morning sessions. We've got a few sessions left of the afternoon. Already had a trip to the kitty litter, but managed to keep the bike up right. Um, it's been a fantastic day so far. I've got a few sessions to go, so let's see how we get on. So here's my turn by turn guide for Donington Park. This is from a novice perspective of somebody who also has a slightly respectable time on the game Ride 4. So full throttle down the start finish straight. The first corner here is Redgate. I keep left early and use the red pit lane as my brake marker, being mindful of the pit entrance where bikes join the track. It's a little bit sketchy. If you turn in too early here like I have, you'll end up compromising your exit drive for Hollywood or end up off the track like I did earlier. Redgate tightens up into Hollywood, a blind double apex. I try to stay a little bit wider the first apex, then hit the second while smoothly getting on the gas. As I'm approaching Craner Curves, this is a fast downhill left-hander, going as fast as I dare, aiming for the apex, then drifting towards the middle of the track, quickly back over to the left, setting myself up for the old hairpin, a fast right-hander where it's easy to run wide and lose exit drive. Powering up the hill towards Starkey's Bridge, kiss the apex and run wide, to the right, pulling back to the apex for Schwantz. Out wide again and pull back on the brakes towards the left of the track to set up for McLean's. For McLean's, I hug the apex and aim to get the bike stood, firing out again to gain momentum and hugging now the left hand side of the track ready for coppice, which is totally blind and you don't turn in until you see the apex now. Timing is crucial and I need to run a bit wider out to the left before cutting back in for the late apex. If you've got coppice right, you've got the bike stood up and back on the power early to fly down the back straight, gradually pulling the bike to the right hand side of the track in time for the S's. I turn in too early here for the S's and the aim is to use both curbs in the dry, giving a clear run down to the Melbourne hairpin, the tightest and slowest corner of the track. I brake when I come over the crest and Melbourne comes into view. I can see I'm turning in a bit too early again here, so leave this a bit later, square it off and use the corner and the full width of the track for maximum drive towards Goddard's. Goddard's is another late apex, tight left-hander that I've turned in far too early for here. Getting back on the power smoothly and using the whole width of the track helps achieve maximum drive back onto Wheatcroft straight. 
over a pretty below average time of 2 minutes and 5 seconds. Let's see if we can improve this in the next video.